Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. We all learn in different ways. For many people, seeing is believing. When it comes to agricultural research, most farmers want to see for themselves whether a new crop or new practice is right for their farm business. And that's where Borderview Farm and UVM Extension come together. Borderview Farm is in Alberg along the Canadian border. In the farming community, it is one of the best known applied research facilities in Vermont. Borderview and Extension partner in a way that land grant colleagues are supposed to, a place where scientists and farmers work together to provide answers to real world problems. For more, here's Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollin. Vermont farmers are known for their hard work, resourcefulness, and innovation. That innovation has to start somewhere, and more often than not, it starts right here at Borderview Farm. When Across the Fence first visited Borderview in 1997, it had just been named Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. Today we've come to Grand Isle County to the town of Alberg, Vermont to meet Roger and Claire Rainville and their family, the Vermont Dairy Farmers of the Year. The Rainville Farm is as far north as you can go in Vermont and their crop lands lie along the Canadian border. We looked at 35 different farms before we settled on this one here. Uh, one of the main reasons was uh, the excellent land and uh, we knew that with a good land base we could produce crops and, and we could really hopefully be successful. Rainville expanded into biodiesel, experimenting with growing seed oil crops for on-farm fuel and using the byproducts to feed the cows. He also began working with UVM agronomist Heather Darby, installing September, several small plots very, around the farm for Darby's October. research. And you can see what happens as the planning dates um, get later and later. When I first started at the University of Vermont Extension, I, I didn't really have a, a place to conduct replicated research, which usually means small plots, small equipment, more time. And I came to the Rainvilles and Borderview Farm because I knew how committed they were to UVM extension. She suggested maybe we try doing a couple of little research plots and we jokingly said, you know, that it would be neat to have our, you know, our, an on-farm research facility and we started out with, you know, a half a dozen little research plots. These days, the cows are gone, but the farm is as active as ever. Since those first few plots, Borderview has become a hub of experimentation with around 4,000 research plots. This research lab that we have here at Borderview Farm allows us to look at those different practices, unique practices, understand how they work and fit here, and then introduce them to the farming community. Welcome again to Borderview Research Farm owned by Roger and Claire. Rainville experiments. One way that Darby and her team introduce farmers to the research at Borderview is to invite them to the farm to see it in action at their annual Crop and Soil Field Day. If you guys make the trip to Empire Farm Show in New York, you won't see this there. Across the fence caught up with Darby and some attendees last summer. The focus of that day was innovation. We're looking at innovations such as variable rate uh, manure spreaders that allow farmers to actually type in exactly how much manure should be applied to that field to minimize any chances for runoff or, or over fertilization. We're looking at innovative um, equipment that helps us seed cover crops into growing fields of corn to reduce erosion and improve crop yields. And we're looking at really innovative practices with iPhone apps and drones that help us monitor the practices we're putting into place and how they impact the bottom line, both how they impact the environment and how they impact our pocketbook. Using innovation to help their bottom line is nothing new for farmers. What is new is the recent legislation regarding water quality and reducing stormwater runoff to Vermont's lakes and streams. Farmers are being approached by the state, the Department of Ag, and they're being asked to uh, kind of step it up almost. And I think that farmers are actually uh, rising to that attention. Uh, they're getting a lot of education at this point in time, but there's still a lot of things that need to be done. Um, there's Darlene Reynolds is the chair of the Franklin Grand Isle Farmers Watershed Alliance. The group works with farmers, offering education and monetary assistance to help implement water quality measures. 
As a dairy farmer herself, Reynolds knows the risks that come with the business. Well, I think when it comes to any type of change that you want to make on your business, you know, you have to look at it at two aspects. One, for water quality, and two, is it going to be economically viable for that dairy farmer? So when you're asking them to change the way that they manage their crops, necessarily, you know that you want them to change their crops in order to improve water quality, but at the same time, they still need those crops to feed their animals every single year, and if those crops don't exist, then that could very well put them out of business. With so much riding on every decision, farmers need to know that new techniques will be successful. That's why seeing the research in action at Borderview is so important. We really try to, to get these practices to a point where farmers can just take them basically right from our research farm and implement them on their own farms. And coming here and actually seeing is part of the process. So seeing is believing. Farmers around the region have implemented practices that they first saw here. The idea of cover cropping has been become like this small idea, especially from Heather Darby, into this expanded huge idea and, and the amount of acreage that, that the Farmers Watershed Alliance was able to do just a few years ago and it's only expanded since then. Um, I think crop rotation has been something that farmers have seen that's really worked and helps the soils out and I think there's a lot of farmers doing that. Um, and I think the whole idea of no-till cropping has become such a huge factor, especially with this past season with being such a wet season. Um, that that option was great for farmers because they didn't have to till the land. Everybody has got a stake in cleaning up the waters and taking responsibility for uh, a great environment. As a dairy veterinarian for over 40 years in the northwest corner of the state, Kent Henderson is familiar with the issues farmers can face when trying to improve the environment and meeting the new state regulations. Henderson is part of the organization Friends of Northern Lake Champlain which is dedicated to reducing nutrient runoff. He says that while the projects here at Borderview have introduced farmers to new techniques of reducing runoff, it's not just farmers that benefit from this information. Soil conservation and water and improving water quality go hand in hand. One of the sources of runoff is from fields that could use better conservation methods that are being taught today. Uh, that doesn't mean that only farms uh, can benefit from this knowledge. Uh, there are many home gardeners here, uh, vegetable growers, and that you know that can add to these things. The reason that that this is so important is uh, uh, Vermont is known for its re environmental responsibility, being a great clean place to live. Uh, it's what draws people to, to live in Vermont and the culture of being in Vermont. Work like this just shows that farmers want to be here too. We're not done by a long shot as far as water quality is going to be on everybody's plate. I mean, not just farmers, but everybody. Uh, we've always said it's our water, it's our lake, it's not mine, it's not yours. So we all have to play a, our own special role and do what we can. And my hope has always been is that we cannot point fingers anymore, that we can just do what we can on our part. If we have an issue, then my hope is that we fix those issues the best we can. And it doesn't mean you have to be a farmer to do that. Uh, we all have small roles to play. And if we all implement these small roles, then we're going to have big success. And one of the things that we're really advocating for is better crop rotations. Okay, you can see it right there. Please walk in there and look. And then walk in here bringing innovation to farmers and their communities. UVM Extension and Borderview Farm are sowing the seeds of success and helping lead the way to cleaner water and a better environment for all Vermonters. In Alberg, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Well, thank you, Rebecca. Joining me now is UVM Extension agronomist Heather Darby, thanks a lot for coming in. Thanks. For and um, me. first of all, congratulations. You were recently promoted to professor. I know that uh, that promotion represents a lot of hard work, so congratulations Thank you. from all of us here. Thanks. Now, how important are Roger and Borderview Farm? Oh, geez. <laughs> That's hard to describe. I, I think you could see in the video how much is happening at that farm and um, really um, the Rainvilles and the farm are at the heart of all of the research that I do here in Vermont. We do research on other farms as well, but certainly not to the magnitude that we um, conduct research at the Rainville Farm. This year alone, we have 86 experiments 
thousands of research plots, dozens of crops, new crops and new practices. So, um, you know, they're at the heart of what we do. Why is it important for farmers and others to be able to visit Borderview and see different trials and yeah. projects going on? Yeah, I, you know, honestly, um, I've worked across the country in different places, and, and I don't know any other place that really exists quite like Borderview Research Farm with the diversity um, and the types of research being done and the accessibility, the openness of the farm to whoever comes, stops by. Um, we have this big field day, but you know, there are people coming there all year long to visit and see crops, see practices. Um, and so it, it allows farmers um, a place to see the newest, latest um, and greatest research and information that's being conducted and see a lot of it too. And I think it's really important, as it was said in the video, seeing is believing, mm -hmm. so. And so you've been the statewide leader for the practice of cover cropping. Was there research at Board of View that led you to advocate for, for yeah. cover cropping? <laughs> um, that's where a lot of the research started. We, we started a lot of research demonstrations out on farms all around the region, but we had some real critical questions that had to be answered about, um, you know, how late can cover crops be planted uh, for them to still be effective from a water quality perspective for building soil health? What kinds of cover crops perform the best here in Vermont? Um, what are the seeding rates we should be using to get the environmental benefits but not cost the farmer too, mu too much money? Um, and how best can we establish them? And all of that research started at Borderview Farm um, the, you know, the benefit of being able to conduct research in smaller plots is that you can test more treatments. Right. So, you know, if you want to test uh, 20 different seeding rates, that's really difficult to do on a large scale. But we can test 20 different seeding rates on a small scale, figure out which ones do the best, and then put those out on um, farms, commercial farms, on a large scale. Mm -hmm. So it helps us kind of fine tune um, the practices and the recommendations before we bring them out uh, because on a want, commercial scale. You want these to be successful because exactly. if they're not, then farmers won't use these practices. Right, and if you're trying 20 on a commercial farm, you know, that that's not really the job of our farmers. Their job is to farm, right. do a good job at it, um, make milk, whatever they're, they're uh, growing. Our job at the university is to, you know, do the research um, and then deliver that in a really meaningful way to the farmers so that they can try a couple of practices and see which ones work the best for them. Are there any areas of research in which Board of View has had the biggest impact? <sighs> I, so many, it's hard to say. <laughs> you know, grains, cover crops, um, yeah, corn, every, everything. <laughs> so what does the future look like when it comes to Board of View Farm? Yeah, well, it's always exciting. Um, we're always trying to figure out and stay in front of what farmers need. And um, this year we will be putting in um, some industrial hemp uh, plots and researching that crop, which um, is, is a new crop for this state or a reintroduced crop. Mm -hmm. And so that will be exciting and something to see at the field day. Somewhat this controversial. Year. A little bit controversial. Um, it is industrial hemp, so it's meant to be used for oil extraction and fiber um, and was a crop that was very, very popular um, in, in this state and across the country as a primary source of rope for the Marines and, um, and clothing too, mm -hmm. and now it's um, being brought back into production. Thinking is farmers can make money off this. Well, I hope so. You know, that's our goal. We want to keep um, farmers viable in the state. That's part of what we do at Border View Farm. Look at different opportunities, but also remain viable while protecting um, the environment around us. Mm -hmm. So. It's well, really we're just about goal. out of time, but if you'd like to learn more about Dr. Darby's work at Border View Farm with the UVM Extension Northwest Crops and Soils team, you can check out the website on your screen. That site has the latest research reports on a host of topics, including grains, oil seeds, hops, and forages. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised you had <laughs> time to come here today. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.